Hello, and welcome to this lesson on component slots in Svelte. In this video, we'll learn how to use slots to embed content in a child component through its parent. In the component props video, we learned that we can pass data from a parent component to a child. While it's great for reusability, it creates a strict parent-child relationship where the parent is allowed to pass data to the child, but the child is always in control of the HTML. Slots allow the parent component to embed content inside a child. This puts the parent in control of the content instead of the child. A slot is a custom tag that we add to the child's markup where we want the overriding content from the parent to appear. The tag can be self-closing or open and close. For our example, we'll use the root app component as the parent and create a component called card as the child. So, new folder, components. Then, new file, card.svelte. We'll start by creating a wrapper div. Then, we'll add a class called card. We want to style the div to help the demonstration, so we'll paste in the style section with some CSS for the card class. We want the parent to override the contents of the card div, so that's where we'll add our slot tag. That's all we need to create a basic slot. To override a child component slot, we change the component instance from a self-closing tag to open and close tags. We can then specify the overriding content inside the tags. As an example, let's override our card component slot in the root app component. We'll start in the script section and import card from components card.svelte. Then in the markup, we'll create a card instance with open and close tags. We can override the slot with anything, including HTML elements. So let's add an H1 with hello there. If we save the file and switch over to the browser, we'll see the heading inside the card div. So, the content was overridden successfully. Svelte allows us to specify default content for when the parent doesn't explicitly override the component. To do that, we use open and close slot tags in the child component and specify the default content inside them. To demonstrate, let's go to the card component and add a paragraph with some text as default content. First, we'll change the slot to an open and close tag. Then, P and default content. Then, we'll go back to the root app component and add another card instance, but this time without any overriding content. If we save and go to the browser, we'll see the second card with the paragraph. So, the default content shows as we expect. In many cases, we'll want predefined structure and content in the child component and only control some of that from the parent. For example, a blog post cards button can be the same for all the posts, but the heading and image should be different. Svelte allows us to have multiple slots in our child component, provided we name them. To name a slot, we attach the name attribute to the slot element and specify a unique name as its value. To demonstrate, let's add two named slots to our card. We'll start by removing the slot from earlier. Then we'll use the snippets extension and type slot. From the flyout menu, we select slot name. We'll call it card title, then press tab to select the comment and enter to delete it. Then we'll create an H3 tag and say, fallback title. Below that, we'll create another named slot and call it card image. Inside, we'll create a paragraph and say, fallback content. Then, finally, we'll create a button that says, read more. If we go to the browser, we'll see that both cards show the fallback content. That's because when we override a named slot, we have to specify the slot name we're trying to override. To do that, we add the slot attribute to the element we override with. The attribute's value is the slot name we're trying to override. To demonstrate, let's switch over to the root app component and remove the heading in the first card instance. Let's start by overriding the card title. So, we'll do h3 slot card title. And inside it, 
we'll just say, post title. Below that, we'll create an image tag, then add the slot attribute, and card image. For the source, we'll paste in a URL to Pixum's random photo gallery. If we save and go to the browser, we'll see the first card's title and image was overridden. So, the overriding content were placed in the correct slots. Sometimes, it will be necessary to only render content if a slot is overridden in the parent. For example, let's say we have an excerpt for our blog post in the card, and we only want to show that excerpt if the image has been overridden in the parent. Svelte gives us the slots object, which contains all the slot names that the parent overrides. That means we can access a specific slot name and use it as the condition in an if block. Note that the slots object must be prefixed with $2 signs. To demonstrate, we'll use the excerpt example we mentioned and only render it if the card image slot is overridden. So, below the image slot, we'll type if and select the if block from the flyout menu. As the condition, we'll use the slots object to get the card image slot name. So, double dollar signs, slots dot card image. Inside the block, we'll just add a paragraph and say, post excerpt. If we save and go to the browser, we'll see the excerpt, because the root app component currently overrides the image. So, let's go to the root app component and remove the overriding image. If we go back to the browser again, both the image and the excerpt doesn't render. So the condition in the if block worked. In Svelte, we can define props in a child component slot, then access the prop values in the parent when it overrides that slot. To define a slot prop, we simply add it to a slot tag in the child component. Before we demonstrate, let's simplify the card and remove everything inside. Then, we'll create a self-closing slot tag and name it author. After the name, we'll add a slot prop called full name with John Doe as its value. To access the slot prop values in the parent, we use the let directive on an element in the component instance we're overriding. The directive has to bind the prop we want to use. For our example, let's remove the heading from the first card instance and replace it with a P tag. Then we'll target the author slot. So, slot attribute, author. After that, we use the let directive and bind the full name prop. Now we can use the prop in the overriding content, so we'll say, written by curly braces, full name. If we save the file and switch over to the browser, John Doe shows in the paragraph. So, we were able to use the prop from the card component. Something else to note is that the second card instance, which doesn't use the prop in any way, doesn't show any content. Props can't be used as default content. They're just there to enable us to send data to the parent and have the parent decide what to do with the data. All right, that concludes this lesson on component slots in Svelte. In the next video, we'll learn about local and global component styling as well as standalone style sheets. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.